If you're thinking about buying a power meter, but you're not sure what to look for or what to go for, then this video is for you. I'm gonna run you through what a power meter is, the different types available, and which ones might be perfect for you. A power meter is the best way of objectively telling you how hard you're pushing the pedals on your bike. This is done by measuring your torque, how hard you're pushing on the pedals, multiplied by your cadence, how fast you're turning the pedals. This will appear as a number in watts, which will appear on your cycling computer while you're riding. But what do you do with those watts? Well, we need an entirely separate video to really go into the details, so I've dropped a few links below to some of our guides. Now you know what a power meter is, I'm gonna run you through the different types that are available. I'll run you through their pros, their cons, and anything else worth mentioning. First up, we've got crankbase, which as you can imagine, are located in and around the cranks. Now, they can be positioned in multiple different positions. First up, they can be on the crank arm, like so. Then, you can also have them in the chain rings itself, or potentially on the spindle. Now, that's just completely dependent on which brand you buy from. The pros for crankbase systems are that traditionally they've always been some of the most accurate so you can be really confident with the data. They can also include pretty cool tech like being able to measure wattage from each leg so you can see if you've got a power imbalance. The cons tend to be that they've been on the slightly pricier end of the market but those prices have been coming down. The other thing which isn't so great with them is that they aren't as easy to switch between bikes. Power meter brands like Stages and 4i do also offer single-sided only options, which helps keep that price a little bit lower. However, what it does to get your power reading is that it takes the reading from one leg and then doubles it. So it's not quite as accurate, but that being said, if you do want to dip your toe into the power meter market and you don't want to spend a fortune, then a single-sided power meter might be the way to go. Next up, we've got pedal-based power meters, which, as you'd expect, locate all the cool tech within the pedal. So the pros for pedal-based power meters are that they are also accurate and reliable. So similar to the cranks, you can be confident with your data. Also with pedals, they're much easier to switch between bikes. So if you've got multiple bikes you'd want to use pedals on, that's something that's a lot more easily done. The cons though, pedal-based power meters can be expensive. They're also prone to crash damage due to being in a much more exposed area compared to their crank counterparts. Depending on which brand you buy, you might find yourself locked into a specific pedal platform. So if you're particular about the pedals that you use, you might find that those cleats aren't compatible with any pedal-based power meter. Finally, if you're sensitive to things like Q-Factor or Stack, you might find that these values increase when you go to a pedal-based power meter. So these things can be altered with a bike fit. So what I would recommend is if you do go for a pedal-based power meter, go see your local bike fitter to make adjustments for those changes. Before we get onto what might be right for you, a quick word about hub-based power meters. Now, you don't see too many of them, but the way that they worked was, again, by measuring your power through the hub. PowerTap was a well-known hub-based brand, but they were discontinued in 2021 by their parent company, SRAM. Now, there may still be a few for sale out on the market, but I would probably steer clear of them, purely because you won't be able to get parts or the support should they go wrong. However, SRAM might bring them back in the future, so that's something we just have to wait and see for. So which power meter is going to be right for you? Well, I think for those of you that are on a budget and maybe just want to dip your toe into the power meter market, then a single-sided crankbase system could be really good. They might not be as accurate, but with a discrepancy of a few percent here or there, I think that's going to be good for most of us. If you have more to spend and potentially more bikes that you want to switch a power meter between, then I think this is where a pedal-based system comes in superior. Just remember, you might be limited on the different pedal systems that you can use. If you only have one bike and don't mind a little bit of mechanical faff and want to spend more, then I think a dual-sided crank-based system is going to be a really good option. Crank-based systems are used by the vast majority of pros, and as the old saying goes, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. Hopefully now you're all clued in with the ins and outs of power meters and you've got a good idea on which one you'd like to buy. If you do have any questions though, drop them down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you again very soon. Oh! <laughs>